Hello and welcome back to Recommend First. Today we are getting started with our Factor 2. And I am just so really excited for this one. Not only did I actually wait a couple of days for this very moment to finally get it started, I haven't looked at it, I haven't booted it up. Um, I really wanted to uh, share this first moment, uh, this first experience as authentic as possible with you guys here on the channel. Welcome in. Um, yeah, this is, this is going to be a very first getting started, um, looking at all the possibilities, looking at uh, what is our factor 2 from not only a story that we have heard about it, that we have learned, because let's face it, our factor 2 has been out there for a very long time and still to this very day, I mean, when did the UI update came out? That was like two months ago or, or one month ago, so it's still very well maintained. Um, and again, I think we got our factor two back in 2012 ish, so it's even older than a set of Corsa. And you know, that's to me the first sim that I actually got into uh, last year. Was that last year? Yeah, that was last year. Um, driving my Trustmaster T150 in my first uh, championship with um, the pit crew, which really got me into all of this. And uh, and you know, just as a little background story, that got me into um, ACC recent recently, where I do a sprint league series with simracing.xp I've been streaming that on my Twitch channel but today I wanted to uh, do this on YouTube because I'm really looking for what platform to go to and um, I'm really hoping you guys can help me decide on this today so be sure to uh, get in the chat there um, if you do appreciate this content if you want to see more R Factor 2 be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and um, get into it. Right, I think that was already <laughs> too much of an introduction. What I want to start with is the absolute basic. And for me, that is getting into Sim Hub and setting up my base shaker, setting up the dash, um, and have that running. So, um, Let's switch to um, SimHub here. For those of you who are completely new to SimHub, let me explain a few things here. SimHub is basically the one-stop dashboard for all your sim racing content. You can control um, external dash monitors if you will where you got like uh, tire temps uh, tire pressures uh, or even the leaderboards uh, all that type of stuff that you can uh, run on a separate monitor uh, for example your phone your tablet uh, little motec displays that you can have on top of your uh, your wheelbase um, that kind of stuff we also get to control like wind tunnels to you know simulate wind um for me i use it mainly for like i said a a dash that i got right here on my left that displays my tire conditions as well as running my base shaker so that's what we will get started on setting up um my base shakers for R Factor 2. The dashboard here is where you can see all the games that are supported for uh, SimHub. So basically, you can 
well, name it, and it's probably in here, even the Forza Horizon games are supported, so basically what this does is it reads the telemetry from the game, or from the sim, um, and it uses that to control what you have going on, in my case, two bay shakers, one in the front and one in the rear, um, which we will get into. We've got our factor right here, so before I do anything else, I'll load that in. And the R Factor 2 telemetry is not configured. Let's see if we can do that automatically uh, before. Okay, so have to do that manual. We will get back to that. But for now, let's go into my shaker base shakers um, to run you over this process. Now, I have two effects profiles set up which I use in all my sims basically um, and what it does is I have a profile for front engine cars and rear engine cars um, and I will explain to that once we get into the sound output for the channels um, but basically what I have for these channels is I have engine related vibrations mapped to whichever car is having a front engine or a rear engine or a middle engine but I take that as a rear engine because I don't have a shaker in the middle kind of makes sense doesn't it um so yeah, these are all parameters that you can control, set the volume for each and every effect that you can get into, uh, yeah, simulated from RPMs building up on a engine that gives vibrations from the engine, uh, wheel lock, wheel slips, um, gear shifts, so whenever you're shifting up or down you get a nice and, and fast vibration from the engine you can feel that kink you know what I mean you know what I'm talking about um, so yeah and basically what we do with um, the sound output is tell simhop to which channel to send a signal to and on what level now um, my front bass shaker on the on the front is right underneath my pedal plate so that gives quite a direct vibration into my pedals um and it's it's more pronounced than the one that i have mounted to the to the chassis on the rear which is you know kind of far away from under the seat so kind of needs a little bit more volume to get the same level of effect i have learned um, so as you can see we have engine vibrations and gear grinding and gear shifts and that's all related to vibrations that are coming from the engines. Channel 1 is my front bass shaker and my channel 2 is the one on the rear. And it may look a little daunting at first but it actually is, is really nicely laid out here in SimHop and it's uh, I can highly recommend it. It's it's uh, such a blast. Gives so much, um, yeah, simulation. Uh, it's it's really cheap to to um, to get into your sim, um, and it's it's it definitely definitely a huge step up. All right, so that's. The base shakers, and that's all I wanted to share regarding uh, SimHop. Let's get into R Factor. And this is something that I already do like a lot. Now, there was quite a bit of um, controversy and a bit of. Um, feedback from the community towards our factor that the UI and the overall user experience was not as 
nice as it could have been was outdated to say the least and um they took this into account now coming from seto corsa and using content manager which you know the content manager is absolutely top notch um and in terms of acc it's just you know it's it's the most i guess i would say modern uh simulator out there mm. but it's just really nice to get greeted here welcome to our factor 2 complete the first launch wizard to set our factor 2 up for your system um why is this nice well you can you know as a newcomer to to sim racing or to what is a sim is you know sims are usually quite in depth in terms of options settings menus everything to go through to you know get that simulation experience um you can tailor so many things to your need and that can be overwhelming and that can be hard to do at first so it's really nice to see a starting wizard so let's start with that and um we can start here nice and easy hello nice to meet you my name is eugene next step please make sure your controls are connected and calibrated correctly in windows before starting okay sure press key or controller escape uh to skip okay steer left should should give us something this is gonna be the first challenge I guess <laughs> press key or controller escape to skip it is not registering any things related to my steering and pedal so interesting here interesting so there we go do you want to assign clutch well not for now since it's not make sure the graphics below fill up completely when steering left and right and when pressing the pedals all the way make sure the graphs are completely empty when the wheel is centered and when you let go of the pedals use the buttons and graph okay I do. Are you using sequential or uh, H pattern? I do have a H pattern. Let's see. Nothing. Please select the collection you want to install. Click the install button to start downloading and install. Um, I think so, yeah. Alright, so this might take a while. 
content installation ready. All right. Finish. Okay, so we definitely need to get back in here. Figure out Should be fine, really. Do a quick search. Start big picture, go to settings, open the controller settings tab. Controller settings tab, I guess. Make sure you don't have generic controller box checked. See if this works.
I don't see any. Um, Just gonna try some things here. That's white. That's more like it. Okay, so if you do run into this issue where uh, your <laughs> control your steering wheel and your pedals are not detected head into uh, steam go to the game right click go to properties and uh, go for controller and then um, change with steam input per game settings change that to use your global settings input settings to force off so controller settings to off and then it will detect your wheel and pedals now you've assigned joystick 5 i for break all right do you want to assign clutch i do 
Perfect. Okay. Um, maybe set a... Just a... Well, Max is okay. might be a good idea is to set your clutch sensitivity uh, for the minimum at five and if you get miss shifts uh, when, when you're not pressing down on the clutch enough you might want to set your max to well not all the way but just I'm going for 95 here there we go all right. Let's try that again, yeah. That's nice and quick. Seventh? Yes, I do. Eighth? I don't. Okay. Completed the first launch wizards. Click finish to start racing. Looking forward to that. Another thing I just um, watched this great interview, which is uh, a bit older now. I think it was uh, like a year old with um, a great channel with Ehrman, uh, with uh, the head of development for Studio 397, the studio behind R Factor 2. Uh, it's quite long, but you can definitely feel and hear the inspiration and passion for sim racing in in what is Studio 397. Other fun fact, 397 is a Dutch studio. Makes me proud. Alright, like to start. Let's see. Well, we'll probably have to get started with single player. But before we do, I think we want to do some more button mapping and um, look at some other settings here, as well as graphic settings, of course. Um, gameplay, let's start off here. Um, no clue what to look for in AI strength. We will probably get into once we do our first race uh, damage multiplier 50% steering help of course auto clutch no auto lifts off hold brakes hold clutch repeat shifts auto start engine uh, nope auto windscreen wipers nope auto headlights and auto reverses also off cool all right Auto pit lane, which is doesn't tell you what it does. No assist, traction controls off. We want to uh, control that with a small little DIY button box that I have on my side here. Uh, so we'll get into the button mapping for the button box in just a second. Uh, cable. LAN <laughs> I 
Sure. Okay. Steer left, steer right. Um, neutral, yes. Clutch, we do. Let's see if we can use this now. Yes, perfect. Starter, engine start. Uh, speed limiter, that's probably for in the pit lane. So we'll map that over here. Basically what I'm going for is the same kind of setup I use for ACDC, so I don't get confused when going through different game button map setups. Wipers, right here, horn, <laughs> of course, orange control, uh, nah, brake bias, right there, right, uh, what I don't see yet is controlling ABS as well as traction control. Increment mixture. Soften and stiffen the ARB. Boost, activate, push to pass. Probably, maybe in here, maybe in here. Auto shifting traction control. What I am looking for is. Either increasing traction control or decrease that. Wait, here we go. Traction control up. Traction control decrease. Anti lock brake increase. Perfect. There we go. Perfect. Plugins, VR, not relevant, screenshot, restart, race, um, nope, camera controls, camera change. Onboard cameras, look left, look right. Seed and field of view. Are we going to map that to our steering wheel? Yeah, might as well. Just the seat. Probably have to mess with that a little bit for each and every car, but I think we are fairly good to go here. So I think, yeah, this menu looks looks great. 
video driver, monitor one, full screen, uh, yep, vertical sync, post effects, sure, graphics. Um, let's see where we can take this. Shadows, I'm gonna keep that at high right now. Shadow blur, optimal. R reflection, SSR. Nice, it understands metric. Cool. Wait, yeah, I get it. It's a Dutch studio. <laughs> Good. Mirrors on, sure. Steering wheel on. Okay, sure. I think we're good to go. Um. Before we get into the driving part, let's take a look at the uh, store here, which or the Steam Workshop, and oh, eight hundred and ten items, nice. All right, well. Nice, also to T circuit in the Netherlands, which isn't actually far from where I live. Okay, I will definitely be taking a look in at this because I know there's uh, a few tracks that definitely need to get, which are the Nurburgring or the Nord's Life, if you will. Um, Le Mans, as well as Spa from Kershaw, which are a laser scan track, so I will look into that, but first, let's get driving, right? Oh gosh, get away! That's more like it. It's basically just shift tap when it opens up, so Let's go, single player. Let's take a look at this. Um, okay, all right, starting with quick events. Um, here's what we can set up. We want practice, qualify, warm up. I just want to do a practice here. Weather preset, scripted, sunny, cloudy, rainy, default, okay. No AI for now, just wanna get out there for the first time, get a feel for, for things. have any anything in here yet do I need to get some things manually do I still need to download something the 
which series? Select series, all tracks and all cars. Loading series, all tracks. Zero tracks, zero cars. Announcing the new BMW M4 GT3. Uh, I think we need to get some tracks and cars. Manage content. Installed. Corvette. Need to grab something, guys. A lot of open wheelers here. I want to filter some things and just see tracks or cars. Porsche came in 718 Mantai Racing GT4 Cup. Some games, gotta restart them. Looks like it's updating things. So let's wait that out for a bit. do its thing so about studio 397 which like I said is based in the Netherlands um, released in 2012 is what I believe um, 
which kind of offers and that's why I was interested in R Factor 2 besides the fact that it I think it got a real popularity boost with the latest Le Mans series the virtual Le Mans series for 2022 which got over let's see if I don't get this wrong um, right during the span of the series it reached 81 million viewers 81 million viewers and 360,000 hours were consumed um, so it, it, it got a real boost in, in popularity I, th I think right there um, but I was actually really looking forward to something in between a set of Corsa which kind of feels from time to time like um, you know a bit pointless if you will just uh, trying out new mods going for a couple of rounds but not really doing that racing aspect and uh, you know with ACC it's it's mainly GT3 as GT4 and it's really fun I really do enjoy uh, racing GT3 cars um, but I want to you know get something get those kind of other type cars and this is where R Factor 2 really has has something going for itself because it's offering formula cars uh, carts as well uh, NASCAR uh, open wheelers all that kind of stuff and like we saw earlier we get a full day and night cycle uh, with life and a weather integration uh, yeah, full life weather integration. Um, and it's known for the most realistic and authentic um, track surface simulation, which reacts to the weather and how much rubber there is laid down on the track um, by the other cars. Because what we are seeing right now, and I really recommend you to watch the latest. Um, preview for Gran Turismo 7 which absolutely looks fantastic with especially the part where they talk about the weather and how it changes the track but the when it rains and the, and, and that's track condition that changes um, and it dries when the cars drive over the track but it dries at the racing line and the difference with that from R Factor 2 is where it actually drives from where the cars drive not the generated racing line so that gives a lot more information and um, let's see what else do we have um, tire model um, flat spotting deformation all that kind of stuff uh, dynamic aero model yeah it's a lot and I really look forward to test it out and I hope this hurries Oh darn, that was, that increased in price, okay. I think we need to reboot one more time, guys.
st still says we don't have any tracks, zero cars. We need at least something, right? Let's get Daytona. Really looking forward to do some American track racing as well. One more time. Yeah, that's really getting started. <laughs> Getting that first bit of content in, doing the button mapping. That's how you start a sim. Okay, well, looks like we have 18 gigabytes to download before we can get back in the game. So that, that's going to take us way too long. So let's wrap it up right here uh, for our getting started. I think the um, next thing we'll do is plan a new stream to actually get on track, get the cars, and uh, see how it drives. Now, this was... Getting started with R Factor 2 in 2020. Is it worth it? Well, it might be a bit soon to say that, but uh, first experience, first impressions, um, the UI is a really nice step up. Um, the first starting wizard is really nice to uh, go to um, get everything set up, do the button mapping. Good, it's promising. Um, looking forward to the next bit. So, see you guys there. Take it easy. Until next time. Bye-bye.